So uh, next up we've got Matthew Stone from CDK Global. Matthew's going to talk uh, about pus Puppet for Windows administrators, and I know anyone who's who's doing Windows administration here in the room hopefully is excited that there, yes, there is something for you. Yes, excitement. So other good news for folks who are thinking about coming down to Portland for PuppetCon uh, in October. Matthew is going to be speaking there uh, as well. So if you like it here, you can come. Come see him speak again uh, in October. And we still have that raffle open until 3.15. So thank you so much, Matthew. Thanks. It'll actually, uh, it'll be the same speech. I'll just have a t-shirt cannon at Puppet Comps. <laughs> Should be a lot more fun. Uh, so quick poll here. Uh, how many people are doing anything with Puppet and Windows right now? Nice. All right, that's actually a good number. And how many are frustrated with it? <laughs> Slightly less, it's actually a good place to be. Um, so this is a beginner level talk, just uh, I'm going to go over some concepts here, a little bit of code, uh, but just try to put some words and pictures behind what kind of problems we are facing in this space. Uh, automation with Windows coming from these uh, Linux-based configuration management tools, uh, they can butt heads a little bit. Uh, it's a new space. I don't think anybody really has this figured out. So just trying to get the problems out there and see if we can solve it together as a community is a great place to start. Uh, so with that, let me give you a little bit about. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so a little bit about me. Um, Twitter, GitHub, Puppet Forge. I throw some stuff up there. Uh, all the Forge stuff is Windows based. Feel free to play with it. Some of it's kind of stupid puppet tricks. Some of it you can actually use to get work done. Um, I do computer stuff uh, to kind of put context around where I come into this game. Uh, I was a teenage Solaris admin. Uh, I was working for internet companies in Chicago, uh, managing like Apache, Bind, SendMail on Solaris into some BSD and a little bit of Linux. One day I fixed a Windows server and the next day I was the Windows guy. Uh, <laughs> sounds like a very familiar tale. Uh, that was maybe 12 years ago, so uh, 9 or 10 of the last 12 has been dealing with Windows. Um, in that range of a career, uh, I have had to do a lot of documentation as well, and I think the microphone and my phone are conflicting with each other. Hey buddy, let's just get out of here. <laughs> so. Um, I've done a lot of documentation. I've written some courseware on, on contract for Microsoft. I've uh, written knowledge base articles and walkthroughs and everything customer and internal facing you can imagine. Uh, so for me, finding an answer to a problem is, uh, it's a problem, so it aggravates me. I want to write it down and I want to never have it aggravate me again. Uh, so when I see something like Puppet, uh, which I was exposed to a couple of years ago, uh, it really appealed to me. Now we're looking at something where you are documenting, but it's document you can execute. Uh, this shows you how to declare these resources and how to actually get things done. You can go back and see what happened. You can make iterative changes, test these changes, and push them in. Um, Windows, again, a weird space. There's group policy, there's system center, there's a lot of other tools that do these kind of things. Puppet, for me, blended what I did on the command line for the first years of my career and it, with what I was doing with the, the second half of it with Windows and really kind of gets back to getting under the hood and knowing precisely what you are doing and how you increment with change. Um, so let's move forward to uh, some stats here. This is uh, last year there was a big thing at PuppetConf. Uh, I think there was a talk Windows as a first class citizen and uh, I liked it but I don't believe it yet. <laughs> I want to get it there. I, want to, I really want it to be there and I want people to want it to be there too. Uh, as of June, I checked, there were about 3,200 uh, modules in the Forge. You look for Red Hat or Debian, you get about 850. Windows is 160. So you're looking at 5% of the Forge is dedicated to making Windows a little less of a beast. Um, the most common modules are, are repeats of relatively the same things. Managing the firewall, automatic updates, environment variables, 
uh, some stuff with the remote desktop, maybe downloading files. There's a couple of different uh, like wget, pget, staging module, those kind of things that can work in the Windows space. Um, these are small. <laughs> there are bigger fish to fry with Windows. Uh, a lot of that comes down to one of the first roadblocks in getting in, in, into development here. Uh, Windows is confusing. Uh, subtitled, where are my settings? Because installing a, a Windows application isn't the same by any means as what you would do with Linux. So uh, I've seen this through the other talks today, so I'm kind of happy. You have something similar to this with Linux. Package, file, and service. If I can install Apache, if I can manage the comp files, and I can kick the service, I have the most part of this application managed at this point. There, there may be many other things with iterating on hashes and arrays and doing some very fancy stuff, but this is the core of getting something launched. Uh, switching over to the Windows side, a little bit more work. Uh, first of all, Windows is a, an all-in-one solution, or it tries to be, and part of that structure requires, uh, they've broken it into roles and features that you can use to build uh, whatever you need for this box. So instead of Apache, you have the web server role. Instead of dealing with like NFS or Samba, you'll have a file services role. And there's many things underneath that. Uh, there, I believe it's features, sometimes it's called role services. But going into like under file services, dealing with DFS replication for file servers and those types of things, uh, there's a lot there. There's not a lot of people I know that are Windows administrators that are Windows administrators that know every piece of this technology. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are really good at IIS or really good SQL admins or maybe the combination of the two of those because those two pieces usually make the money for companies. Uh, there's good AD and group policy people and there's some people that specifically spend their lives setting up group policy and, and managing that for a living. Uh, so it's a really hard beast to tackle. Uh, it's, it's bulky. It's <laughs> it's just too much. Uh, what's that? Windows. It's Windows, yes. Yeah, it, it sums it up perfectly. So I've always kind of felt that the Linux and the other Unix-based systems I work with, uh, it's a nice, solid engine to work on. So you have, uh, I'll take that down. That might be a non-available uh, engine. So, I have an arc reactor here. Uh, if anybody like, has ever seen a Marvel movie, you should have seen these plastered everywhere. Um, it's a good engine. It's a good thing that's small, portable, you can put it into whatever you want, shape what you want as the end result, and just have that. No extra pieces. You can have a web server. If you really want to nitpick that, you can define specifically those packages you want installed, and you don't have to carry anything else into that operating system with you. As a result, you have this really small footprint that can go many places. Uh, in contrast to that, Windows kind of reminds me of a uh, like 80s era Buick estate wagon. Um, I love this car. I, I grew up in one of these cars. Lots of space, big engine, and it's powerful. I wouldn't really call it flexible. Uh, now, Microsoft, the new Microsoft, has, has done some work to erase the, the image here and try to redefine what they can do as an operating system. Uh, one of the pieces that I really like and have started to explore uh, in relation to Puppet is called Server Core. Uh, has anybody, does anybody use it on a daily basis? <sighs> has anybody looked at it? Is anybody scared of it? Okay. That's Server Core. That's it. That's your GUI. Um, so for a Linux admin, you're like, oh, after all these years, they decided to become Linux. <laughs> kind of. You'll notice the lack of a start button and the lack of anything other than that prompt. And if you close this prompt, a prompt comes up. <laughs> so this is server core. And, and with it, you have some benefits. Um, let's talk about these. So if you can start with server core, you can reduce the, the footprint of that operating system. Uh, Microsoft says four gig. On, on my own testing, it's around three. But you get to shave a lot off. And when you're dealing with templates through virtualization or whatever, uh, that's a lot of disk costs that you get back. Uh, since you aren't installing the features you don't need, 
like a GUI. Uh, less patches. Patch Tuesday doesn't become as awful of a situation or the annual time your company patches, depending on uh, how you do those things. Uh, 35 to 45% fewer patches are needed on server core than with a standard installation. Uh, it's easy to switch back and forth. 2008, this was not the case. 2012, R2, uh, there are two Windows features. Uh, you can install them or you can remove them, and that will add or remove the GUI from the system. And you don't have to be sold on just giving up because you don't have a GUI anymore. Uh, you always have that ability to switch things back on or off. Uh, you always have the ability to switch it off but enable management from a remote machine. And that was kind of how uh, you know the Microsoft people originally intended it as they noticed a lot of their people, uh, they're using Microsoft on a day-to-day -day basis, they're using Windows, are connecting from remote desktop. They are uh, going into an admin machine, a jump box, from their desktop with RSAT, and they're trying to manage the things that way instead of hopping around from node to node. Uh, so this was kind of the intent. You can lower that attack surface. Uh, nobody can break into your data center and uh, bring this box up with the terminal and really know what they're doing unless they're very savvy with uh, working at the command line. And that's kind of an odd game for Microsoft. Uh, roles and features. Now there are some limitations, but with 2012, uh, the big guys are all represented. If you want to work with server core, you can run AD, you can run DHCP and DNS servers, uh, you can run file servers, Hyper-V, uh, IIS is the big one. If you have uh, an application that can work under server core, you can have headless web servers. When you're working with something like Puppet, this is kind of beautiful. If you don't want people logging into a box anymore, take the head off it. So I think that works really well with Puppet. <laughs> the, the, where I've worked over the years, uh, yeah, everybody wants that goal of, well, we, we don't even have to log into the boxes if it's if it's sick, we just tear it down and press a new button to get a new one. Some people have done that uh, some places, and I really want to see how you do that, because uh, in a, a large enterprise, it's, it's really hard to put all those pieces in place to get there. Um, and I think one of the ways to get there is to, to cut the head off of Windows and use the rest of it. Uh, we move from this to this, and once we can deal with everything through here, I, I, I think you can really start managing this thing through a tool like Puppet. Uh, so there are some disadvantages. First, uh, you're going to deal with some compatibility issues. Uh, PowerShell. How many PowerShell people in the house? All right. Good to see you. PowerShell is awesome. Uh, it came out in 2008, uh, release of Windows. And it is a little bit of, what's that? Came out in Exchange All right, there you go. And. It's basically a, a scripting language that you can use. It's, it's many things. Let's just call it a scripting language right now that you can use to automate functions in Windows. Uh, it's very extendable. You can build your own functions into it. You can treat it as an actual language. And it'll do many things. And it ties into the .NET objects so you can start really kind of getting under the hood of Windows. Um, however, has anyone ever, well, we don't have a lot of server core people in here. If you tried to build a, a DNS server on Windows from the command prompt, uh, you start drinking around 20 minutes in. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's not something that's easy to do, and that's the first half is installing a feature, and that's very easy. That's PowerShell. Then there's setting up uh, some of the information on how that server should be configured and what type of DNS server it's going to be. And, uh, these kinds of things aren't necessarily PowerShell. These are manipulating WMI objects, which we can call PowerShell, because that's what we use to do it. But then there's also like the DNS command and, and other commands that you'll need that are old uh, DOS commands, essentially, to, to make these changes with the system. So the learning curve is, is massive for something like this, uh, especially if you are, and I, I I like and I hate to use this term, but somebody years ago threw out the word click jockey. There's a lot of people that are Windows admins that can get very far in life right clicking and go into properties and never having to use the command line. And they, they meant it in kind of a, you know, well, they were Linux admins, so it makes a little sense for all your conclusions. But 
Windows was built with that in mind initially. It was built so you didn't really have to do a lot of stuff in the command line if you didn't want to, and you could still successfully run an organization. Uh, I have run over 500 systems before I really got into the command line and PowerShell. It's that giant data center of Windows web servers and SQL servers without really ever having to touch registry items, without ever having to touch the command line more than a few things here or there. SQL queries is another thing, but it, it's very easy to do this. So I think one of the first big steps we need to take as a, a community that wants to be able to do this configuration management in Windows is to just say no to click jockey. Uh, <laughs> Some people say that you shouldn't automate what you don't know. Uh, I know you can't automate a right click at scale. Uh, it just doesn't work out that way. So if you really want to know something, you got to get under the hood. You got to do it by hand. Uh, it's frustrating doing something by hand. Uh, I've, I've done a lot in this Windows development space for the companies I've worked for. There is a lot of by hand when it comes to, to trying to automate things with any configuration management tool. Uh, but once you're done, you have a living document of the work you've done, and you know how to go back and review that, and you know how to execute that reliably somewhere else and get the end result. Um, so let's talk PowerShell for a minute, because there is a wide variety of who knows PowerShell and what they know about it. Uh, this is the most basic PowerShell you'd see. That's just install a, a role. Uh, that's a commandlet, and that can take parameters. That maybe that's all you've done with PowerShell. That I've also gotten pretty far with that. Uh, I, this doesn't necessarily mean you're really good at PowerShell, though. I I spent six months at, at Microsoft on a contract where I did nothing but PowerShell every day, but it was in the context of Office 365 management, and that has absolutely nothing to do with what I would do day to day on a Windows Server with PowerShell. So there's many different modules for PowerShell that you can bring in uh, that cover a wide range of things. And you can actually build them yourself if you ever start digging around at, at how to make these kind of things happen. Um, so maybe you've gotten this far. Maybe you've gotten a little further into doing some filtering here, uh, getting objects, getting their properties, and filtering those properties out. So you can see, like in this example, we're going to grab all the Windows features. We're going to see which ones are installed on our box. Um, very, very simple example here, but that's, you know, piping something into a filter. That's the next stage of what you need to do. Um, maybe you've dabbled in scripting with PowerShell. Uh, for all in, maybe you've automated your entire Windows infrastructure with PowerShell and we can just hang it off of Puppet and be done. Uh, that's awesome. It's a scripting language. You can put things in there and get things to happen. Uh, your conditionals, you can set up strings, parameters, all these kind of things, and it's uh, kind of fun. Uh, one of the roadblocks, though, again, is that you're not going to find many people out there that are uh, Bash, Ruby, PowerShell, Puppet, DSL experts. Uh, that is a wide range of scripting that you may need to do on a, a daily basis if you're going to develop for Windows. Um, so there, there's a little bit there where you really need to concentrate on how are you going to organize these things. And uh, just from the success I've had with it, uh, let's talk a little bit about manifest and PowerShell scripts. Now, I have walked into many situations where a manifest is 500 lines of uh, the PowerShell resource, or the uh, registry resource, and I've walked into situations where it's a bunch of file resources that drop PowerShell scripts and execute them. Uh, and that's the extent of how people wanted to work with Puppet in the Windows space. Uh, I have tried to keep a model, since I started with this, to try to keep as much of the information as possible inside of Puppet and use that to drive the smallest amount of PowerShell possible. Um, Windows with PowerShell is really good at that command level of executing one simple thing, do this to this variable. Uh, so I will show just some rough examples here. Something like this, where if you're installing a Windows feature, um, you put all that conditional logic, you're checking the case, and coming down to that exec resource, all you're doing at this point is running, get Windows, or install Windows feature again. You're just having all that logic determined in Puppet. So now when you do something like this, you're able to use, you can assign it within the profile, um, 
or within the module, you can assign it in Hira and do a lookup. And typically that's how the, I've operated with anything I've done. Windows features are an array in Hira that gets merged between all the different tiers to build exactly what we need out of a server. Um, now, on the flip side of it, you can use Puppet and PowerShell together. In this case, you can use Puppet to form what your PowerShell script should look like. So if you, have, if you can't get this done in a commandlet, and you can't get it done in two or three without a Puppet manifest just looking insane, uh, you can always have PowerShell run, but where I try to keep things is, again, all of that data, all of that logic will stay in the Puppet side. And in this case, it's going to drop the template for the PowerShell script. And this is uh, just a standard ERB template, but we're going to drop information from the module into the PowerShell script and dump that on the box. And at that point, you should have something custom for that build. But now you can use facts, you can use any of the known information coming out of Puppet to, to customize this script and run it on your box. Um, so a bit contrary to that, uh, a lot of people jumped up and down when it was announced, but uh, Microsoft has something they've been working on called Desired State Config. Uh, and a lot of people like it, uh, a lot of people don't. I know there is a Puppet module in the Forge if you ever really want to play with how this would work inside of Puppet. Uh, so it's basically Microsoft's take on Puppet, Chef, whatever management tools are out there, uh, written by the makers of Windows for the users of Windows. So this should allow you to declare resources and uh, ensure the desired state has been met. It sounds kind of familiar to other sales literature. Uh, with DSC, you can use Puppet as a data source with the module that's available on the Forge. And then it pushes everything into Windows. So you're, you're just using it as data. Windows is doing all the magic. And part of why I don't really want to do that is I'm building all the magic on my end. And I mean, really, it's not magic. What we're talking here is the Puppet PowerShell module calls PowerShell. That's what it does. It doesn't have some secret hook into the universe that makes PowerShell happen without PowerShell being installed on the box. Same thing with running an exec resource through the command prompt. Uh, the Windows feature module just calls PowerShell to install Windows features. So you can see these building blocks start to stack and how things are manipulated in Windows. It's, it's not that hard to bring that into the Puppet side of things. And the more information you can take out of Windows and push into Puppet, through custom facts, through, through any information that you can build on that box. Uh, the more successful you can be in applying Puppet DSL into Windows. Uh, so let's, a brief example here, side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, which one's DSC? Which one's Puppet? All right, so there are similarities. Um, I, I, I guess there's only one way to write this stuff, right? <laughs> And so that's what your, your Forge module does, is it really just takes the Puppet side and parameterizes that to shove it into a file on the DSC side, and then it kicks off the install. Um, I've seen meetups out here with, with Chef where they're very go-go uh, about this way of doing things. I, personal opinion, I, I am not. I, I just think we should get this figured out in Puppet. Uh, that's, I just back that horse, and that's how I do. <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you're starting out from nothing, maybe DSC is for you. There is a Linux version, but I really don't think we should bring that up any more than that. Uh, if you're managing 100 Windows nodes in one Linux box, maybe DSC is for you. If you're managing a, a hybrid environment, uh, you want one tool. You, you don't want to have your configuration tool tell your configuration tools what to do. You want one unified tool where you can Go to the dashboard and see everything there. You can see how the classes are applied, and you don't see this vague reference to that, well, we send data over here, we don't know what that means. So me personally, I'm gonna stick with the Puppet stuff. If you ever would wanna play with DSC and see how it works in the context of your environment, there's a Forge module that you can go out and play with. Um, there are a bunch of helpful Forge modules too. Uh, some here, I think some were covered earlier. Puppet Labs has done a little bit. Um, my only real beef, I won't get 
too randy. Yeah, the, the reason this is called Beyond the Registry is something that always made me laugh with, uh, if you've dealt with uh, Windows, or I think it's with the Puppet 3.7 or 3.8, if you go to the web installer, there's a little thing at the end that uh, says, congratulations, you have Puppet. You can now manage your Linux infrastructure and networking items or edit the registry. And to me, that's like, build these awesome things or edit a string, all up to you. Uh, registry is an awesome building block. PowerShell, awesome building block. Same thing with dealing with ACLs and reboot. But that's not a solution, that's a tweak. You know, that on, on the Linux side, that's just editing a, a one-liner in a file to get certain things to happen or running some simple permissions. That does not make a fully configured system. Uh, so there are a couple of approved modules out there for you know Windows feature. Uh, I still think that should move over to the supported column, but I think it went into Puppet Community Manage now. Uh, but again, that's just using PowerShell to install features. But if you're using a Windows box, what's the first thing you need to do to configure it? If you want to build a web server, you need to install a role. Uh, that is an essential piece of, of what you need to do Windows. IIS, if you're gonna run IIS, well, there you go. That's uh, one of the most popular ones I've seen. Uh, it's actually a really nice module and it's maintained and, and uh, I think Liam Bennett is his name. Uh, awesome dude, really uh, takes care of that stuff. And there's, there's a bunch more out there. Uh, there. There's really a lot to be done though. <laughs> Again, if you look at that space, you can see a lot of these are the building blocks, but we don't see things yet like, here's how to run a DNS server with server core, and I wanna see those examples. Uh, I think going back to something Eric said earlier uh, about OpenStack and how it's like, well, there's 80 million components to OpenStack, and now you can manage and play with those through a Puppet module. There, maybe there's double that for Windows. <laughs> there is a vast amount of things that you can do that you may not even know about. And having the ability to go in there and flip a switch and see if this is something that you might want to play with is a good thing. Uh, I think that would get a lot more adoption for what you can do natively with the OS, or if anything, it'll at least teach you if it's for you or not. Um, so one of the things that's another obstacle in moving forward with developing for Windows uh, is package management. So package management is fun. Uh, a lot of it has to do with running MSIs with the silent install function and figuring out all the flags you need to be successful with that. Uh, sometimes you run into issues where if it doesn't show up in a certain uh, part of the registry, uh, it's going to keep trying to run. That's how it ensures if it's installed or not. So I believe he works at Puppet now, but uh, Chocolatey, who, who knows Chocolatey? Okay. I like how the Windows hands all start getting to like smaller segments. Uh, Chocolatey is package management for Windows. Now package management for Windows has existed for over five years. Did you know that? It's just called NuGet and it's part of Visual Studio. So it's not very accessible to the system administrator on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, now you have a lot of pros and cons here. I just put the basic ones up. It's actual package management. You can now use uh, the Forge modules to download the, the Chocolatey provider, and you can be like your Linux friends, say package, sublime text, ensure present, and that's gonna be installed on the box at the next time that Puppet runs. Uh, you have versioning that you can do with that. Now the downside, you have to figure out how to create a feed server. You need a place to put these packages, you need a place for them to be referenced so that you can pull from. Um, you have to learn how to make the packages. Uh, again, depending on your level of being a Linux admin, you may be a guy that likes to bust out RPMs every time you see the need. I know a lot of people that have never even tried to get into that space. So, double so on the Windows side. Nobody's actually had to do this before. <laughs> um, but PowerShell's your friend, and it's easier and easier to get started as the project progresses. Uh, so just an example here, there is now a module on the Forge uh, there's a Chocolatey module, and there's also Chocolatey server. Server takes that much effort to get running on a Windows box. Uh, you simply include it, it's going to go ahead and install IIS, install the bits it needs to get the feed server running, and on a reboot, now you have a fully functioning Chocolatey server. 
Uh, from that point, you need to put the packages together. And I think it's chocolatey.org is the, the site for the project. You can get a lot of information there, but um, when I first started playing with it, it took me about 15 minutes to get through this. Uh, you build a package, you add installation and uninstallation code, which goes back to our silent install flags for MSIs and execs, but this time you get to write a bunch more in PowerShell, so if you need to stage things, uh, if there's any other static things you need done with the package, you can now roll it into this package. Uh, uninstallation is nice to have. You can actually ensure things get uninstalled properly as well. And then you have new spec, which looks daunting, but it's just XML metadata. They want an author, they want a license, they want a version number. Uh, now, the reason to learn packaging, uh, if you've dealt with chocolatey and tried to get stuff off the public uh, feed, varying quality. Uh, chocolatey is really as good as the feed server you're using. If you can build your own packages for your company, for internal applications, those kind of things, being able to install the package through these means becomes so much easier than trying to manage the, the Windows standard package format. Um, so this is just chocolatey working. In Windows Server 10, they're going to add package management, which is going to be similarly structured to this. It, even in the technical preview of Server 10, they added support for chocolatey. So if you build a chocolatey server, you want to go play with Server 10, you can actually set up the, uh, the feed for what you've built to point to this uh, in Windows 10, and then you can try installing packages there as well. Um, so before we even get to the package management, uh, I will do a shameless plug here, but uh, I was working on something. You still have uh, what we always call the zero to puppet problem. Uh, we have a very big provisioning system, and at the end of the day, we need to get the puppet agent on there need to maintain what versions you're running. Uh, you just need to have access to that to get the whole thing done from zero to finish. Uh, in Linux, there's a very easy way to do this. They have the little curl that goes back to the server, can grab the most recent version, get it installed, uh, set what you need on there, and then you're off and running. Windows, you have to put it on you know, a file share, maintain the versions and all of that. Um, so I've worked on something called uh, PE Win Agent. Um, essentially taking all of this in the left side here and reducing it to that. So you can add this on an image and say part of your, the end of your provisioning process is gonna be to execute this and point back at the master. There's a module that's applied on the master that's going to co-opt the space that the PE repo module uses and it's gonna go out to Puppet Labs and find the current version of Puppet and keep an MSI on the Puppet Master so that you can download that. So if you ever upgrade the Puppet Master, it's going to run and realize it needs a new version, keep you with the latest agent. Um, I think I'm coming towards a halt here. Yeah, okay. So really the biggest thing that, as Windows administrators, I think we need to do to get into this space I mean, it's a brand new space and nobody's planted a flag yet. Um, there's a lot of growth that needs to happen on the Windows side, whereas Linux is still growing, but they got the basics figured out. I don't think anybody's done that with Windows yet. Uh, part of that's gonna have to be growth through, uh, through whoever builds the tool that's gonna do it. So if it's Puppet, they need to step forward more into the space. Uh, on the flip side of that, Microsoft needs to be a little more friendly to these kind of tooling. Uh, I think they are. If you ever have looked at uh, some of their, their blogs, they are very happy that people just want to use Azure. And so if you want to use Azure, they have miles and miles of video talking about here's how to do Chef, here's how to do Puppet, here's how to do Ansible. Uh, with Chef and Puppet, I know both of them have contributed templates. Uh, so you should be able to create, I believe, an uh, Ubuntu Puppet Master, uh, which is the click of a few buttons on Azure, and you can also have agents call back into that. Um, same thing, I haven't really played with the chef side, but there's a checkbox, so I assume it works similarly. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, but I think what we, what we really need to do here is evolve. 
uh, need to start embracing the command line and start really getting under the hood and figuring out how to build these solutions for Windows and document them, make them repeatable, and uh, get into a space where, again, we're treating systems like cattle instead of cats here. If, if you don't have a head on the thing, it's, it's not personal. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have a living space, you know. Uh, I, a head, though. Doesn't have I had a web server named Ozzy 10 years back, and I still miss him to this day. Uh, I've grown attached to vagrant images before. It's just how I'm built. So, learning resources. If you need to know more about PowerShell, uh, a lot of Microsoft people have never heard of the Microsoft Virtual Academy. Does anybody know what that is? And, okay, very little. Microsoft Virtual Academy is a ton of videos and tech demos and learning materials, jump starts if you're new to technology, uh, exam prep if you're looking to get certified in Microsoft technologies. And they do a couple of courses here on uh, getting started with PowerShell. I think it's a little out of date. It's the 3.0 and uh, 4 is what's rolling out on R2 now. Um, but they do the getting started, they do advanced tools, and this is all free. You can log on, create your own learning programs, and, and kind of move forward that way. Uh, the Puppet on Windows documentation is there. Uh, again, at the top, I'll, I'll get this deck posted somewhere, but um, you can always find me, and I hang out on the Ask Puppet Lab site, and I have GitHub and Twitter, and I bloviate about Puppet way too much. So uh, if you ever have questions, if you're ever like looking for a place to start, uh, this is what I want. <laughs> I have part of these built. Um, I know some people use these in their day-to-day -day lives, but if you want to play somewhere to work in the Windows space, find what's new to you or what you work with and just anything. Grab a piece of it, start looking through TechNet, MSDN, seeing what you can build. Start asking questions. Uh, the <laughs> Groups and the IRC channels and everything for Puppet are Linux heavy. I would think uh, would be a calm way to put it. A uh, lot of stupid Windows questions. Uh, they would call them that. We'll get knocked out of the room with a simple answer of use Linux. Uh, that was a while back. It's gotten a lot better. There's actually some really good people out there that are working in this space that, that really want this to <laughs> succeed. Um, but it's really going to be a land race to see who's going to really get the, the share of this and, and who's going to understand it best. So with that, I'm pretty much wrapped up here. Uh, does anybody have any particular questions? Yes? Uh, the easiest question, uh, have you worked with Nano Server a little bit? I have not yet. I, I need more time with it. I'm still getting server core to bend in my wheels. <laughs> anybody else? All right. Yes? Have you heard of Box Starter? Box Starter? No. Okay. It uses chocolate as well. Oh. Okay. Box Starter, that was it. And that's the, the one nice part of chocolatey. Um, again, I work in an enterprise where uh, we worked at it. It started as that dreaded we are a DevOps team in a giant enterprise. Uh, but it was with the goal of branching out. Uh, we need somebody that knows how to do this to start. But part of that is training, and now we're going to start bringing other people into the fold. And we've been fairly successful with with getting other groups uh, trained up and how to do this. And one of the, the small wins is that with something like Chocolatey, um, you can make packages that they can also consume. You don't need Puppet to use Chocolatey; it's a separate piece of software. So if you want to build a common platform where you have a, maybe a platform team that isn't doing Puppet yet and you're doing more like application configuration, uh, you can at least come together on if they're hating on configuration management technology and say like packaging, because any Windows guy is going to look at packaging and if it's that easy, they're going to want to do it. So it's, it's just a way to kind of get the teams to collaborate a little more. Um, anything else? All right, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Matthew.